What's up guys, it's Paul here. We're here at my shop. We're gonna go over um, a few things, race day prep, maintenance, whatever you wanna call it. The things that always get us on the track that we sometimes overlook, then we get tons of questions and emails on. So we're gonna have a little series of videos to help with racing, help with the maintenance, help with the small stuff that makes the biggest impact come race day. So today we're gonna look at disc clutch maintenance. This covers over, you know, all of the sizes, one disc, two disc, 50 disc, whatever you got. This is a two disc, two disc, but everything applies to, it's all the same. This is how I do it. There's tons of people out there doing, you know, clutch work, clutch maintenance, clutch service. This is just how I do it and it seems to work. I've been doing racing for most of my adult life and I don't really have any issues as long as I keep up with the maintenance. There's always things we overlook, but hopefully this video will help cover all the stuff that we need to go over for race day. All right guys, so this is the standard two disc clutch. This one is called like the Viper or whatever, the, the aftermarket if you will. Same with this one, this one's a little bit older. This is a Bully brand one, so this is a four disc. This was taken apart for maintenance but this is a bully brand. You know, they're all work the same. They all got springs, they got discs, they got the floaters, they got weights. They all work the same. They're just a little bit different design. I wanted to go over a few things for race day, the basic maintenance that you should be doing week to week, and then things to look over, you know, for in case you need to send your clutch in to have it serviced. And some of this may seem like a lot, but once you've done it one or two times, you can get all this done within 10 minutes. It probably takes longer to take your clutch off your motor on your go-kart than it is to actually do the service if you're doing the weekly maintenance. So this is what the inside of it looks like. And this is what the drum or the, the uh, bell housing looks like, drum, clutch, whatever. I've got this one taken apart already and then we'll take this one apart just to kind of show you. This one is the 11 tooth gear. So it uses a special spiral clip some of them use a little snap ring um, and you just use snap ring pliers to pop it off. This one uses a little spiral clip. Since most of my racers locally use 11 tooth gear, that's what I figured I'd show. You just get a little flathead or a pick. My pick's broken, so I'll probably use a flathead, but you'll just pop the little tab here and then it just, it's called a spiral clip because it just spirals off. Don't stretch it too much. Just barely spin it enough so it pops off. If it starts looking like this, it's kind of wore out. Most of the time, you might be able to get that back in there, but this one's probably wore out. So every clutch is different, guys. Whether I put them together, you put them together at home, or someone else builds them, there's different ways these builders put them together as far as the way the spacers go, way the inside spacers, outside spacers, the gear thickness, everything. So when you take it apart, be very careful that you remember what orientation everything come off so you can put it right back on the same way. So all the clutches on this style have a thick washer that goes on first and that's the most critical part because it keeps it above these bolts. And there's different bolts, but these happen to be the same. Most of the clutches will have a little bearing in here like this. Keep this clean. This has always got to be clean, just like everything else, but this is the most critical for that spinning. When you got it on your go-kart and you spin the tire over and it spins it freely, I've noticed if this is not super clean, it always causes drag, and then that always gives you a little bit of a worry. But for basic race day maintenance, I don't ever take this apart. You want to keep the discs together mating not mating but matching they need to stay together so what you can do before you take it apart or after just don't get them separate is mark them these always go together because if you if you move them around the clutch is no longer mating on the same surfaces together and when you take it apart if you were to orientate this differently and say it is a couple thousands out of round now you've made it even worse so that's the same idea with this. I just keep these two discs put together all the time. It doesn't matter where you put it back on here as long as you just keep the discs together. So for how I clean everything is I normally just get a rag and some brake cleaner. And you just take the one of the washers and I just spin it around. These are pretty bad. This is just an old used clutch I had laying around for the video just to show you, you know, 
how bad they can get and then what they can clean into. That's just off the one washer. And that's how much still is coming off of me doing this twice. Another thing to look for is the groove or the lip that it makes after metal on metal contact. You're gonna get a lip here. You can reuse these a few times, sand them down, you know, clean the edges. But if you've noticed you're doing them all the time, I normally replace them. You know, these are pretty cheap. And this is what's taking your engine that you just spent $1,000, $2,000, $10,000 on, and you're gonna go and throw together a $100 clutch. And you're like, oh, it's good enough. Well, why'd you just spend all that money on your motor and you're not even gonna put a good washer on there? Same with this, but on this one, this is the bearing, yeah. What I normally do is I just spray the bearing itself and I kind of just rub it around. And look how much stuff come out of that. And do this a couple of times. You don't have to make it perfect. As soon as you put it back on your go-kart, it's dirty again. But you want to get this pretty clean. And if you're doing this weekly, it's not going to be that this bad. But like I said, this is an old clutch I just had laying around for the video so I could really show you guys. Another thing to look for is on like on this washer the heat see how it's kind of turned blue this got really hot so these are always things you can look for when you're taking it apart to see telltale signs maybe your kid or whoever's driving you're not getting the starch you think you need or maybe you're you're coming off the clutch and it's or off the track and it's smoking you know maybe you've got something wrong something's binding up bluing on any of this stuff is an indication of heat so make sure you guys are paying attention to that these do get hot but they shouldn't be bluing after one run. The clutch itself, whenever you're weekly maintenancing it, I normally just blow them out with compressed air, air compressor. If you wanna do a little bit of brake cleaner, if you got some real big gunk, you know, focus on the moving parts and blow them out real good. And then what I normally do, and like I said before, this is an opinion and this is just how I do it, race day, if you've brake cleaned it and there might be a little bit of rust build up here and there, put a little bit of WD-40 on it, put it on and run it. The WD-40 burns off. I haven't ever had a problem do it. I know I've had people tell me, you know, it may get on the discs and mess them up, but I've never had a problem doing it this way. You're not saturating the thing in WD-40. You're just trying to loosen everything back up if you get a little bit of surface rust. When putting it back together, I use red bearing grease. Everyone's got their opinion on that too, and I know this one is pretty, people get heated over this one, but I use red bearing grease. I think the other stuff just melts off, and this, as long as you use it right, I never have any problems. On the bearing, I put just a little bit, and when I mean a little bit, I mean a little bit. I put like two little tiny dabs of it. I've had this jar for probably five years, and I'm still going through it. That's about all the grease I put on it and I just put it on two sides. Once you've sandwiched these and put them back on the clutch and they spin around a few times, all this grease will eventually circulate all the way around. It'll be even. The main thing, like I said before, is to put the orientation of the washers back on. So on this one, the thick one, the bearing, and then the uh, other washer on top. And that keeps the driver up off so it'll spin smoothly. Another thing to focus on whenever you guys are taking this off is clean these two pieces really well. You don't have to take them off. You can leave the snap ring on, but you, you don't have to. You can take them off. This one I wanted to take off to show you guys the wear that uh, happens after, if you let this gear wear out or you get a lot of slack in these and you don't keep the washers back in place or put the pieces back together the way the guy built it you get a bunch of slack. Some are worse than others. A little bit's not that big a deal, but you really want this to stay tight. Now don't go replacing this drum every race. If you get a little bit of sound, it's not that critical. But if you start getting this amount, it's probably no good. And if you're starting to get grooves here on the disc slots, you can kind of see a little bit of wear here, but this is really nothing. You'll start seeing grooves where the discs are pounding into the sides. If you allow that to stay, these will start binding up on you as well and they won't, they won't work smoothly. So with this brake cleaner as well, you, if you got a parts cleaner, you can throw it in one of those and let it soak a little bit, just however, but just wiping it off, it's gonna take you 30 seconds to do it. And like I said, this is old. 
they shouldn't look like this after one race. And if you if they are, you've probably got a clutch problem or you've put way too much chain lube or something on it and it's just absorbing into here. So you'll put your gear back on, put your snap ring on, sit it on here. Remember, make sure the orientation of your discs are together like you took them off. So like on this one, we marked it with the red marker. So you would just slide this over and make sure it goes on, you know, the same. And remember, if you don't put the washers on right, you'll get crazy amount of gap like here. And that's never right. You wanna make sure you put it back the way, you know, whoever built it, put it together. And then for the snap ring, for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna fix this one because it's like I said, it's a used clutch. But to put the snap ring back on, all you do is put the one end on and just spin it around like that. And now it's locked. And this is too much play. If you can hear a thing banging around, it's really too much. 15 thousandths or so is really all you want. The main check, you know, spin it over, make sure it spins over smoothly, because too tight is worse than too loose. Too loose will still work fine, but you're just gonna bang out the parts and it's just gonna have premature wear. One thing to keep in mind, if you want to, you can check them, is you can buy the little gauge to check all the weights or the, the springs every time. But normally you'll notice your RPMs are changing. You bought the clutch or had it rebuilt and it's supposed to be 3,500 RPMs engagement. But now you've started noticing that it's 3,900 or maybe even 4,000. It's getting you know way up there. So you're starting to get all the wear and all the parts or the springs have moved or something like that. That's an easy indication that you need to get it serviced. I don't recommend ever taking this part apart unless you're gonna rebuild it. All of these parts mate together, and as soon as you loosen them up and put them back together, they're never going to be the same. Just blow them out, spray them out. That's all you need to do on this part. Like I said, and, I, and I'm getting at least, I don't even look at these parts for my guys, my, my race team, until 10 races. I know everything is, it should be fine for at least 10 races, as long as they're doing their maintenance. After 10 races, I'll check everything over, I'll measure everything and check it. Normally I'm getting 15 to 20 races out of a disc clutch, circle track racing, before I'm rebuilding. And some even look okay at that far, but for me personally, 20 races, that's a lot of run time on these. And I'd rather just rebuild it so I know it's ready to go again for another 20. With the springs, guys, all of these are set and corresponded to the spring size, the gap, the weights you're using. I don't recommend ever messing with any of this stuff. If the builder sent it to you this way, just leave it. If you want to adjust it just a little bit, maybe you don't have time to send it back to the builder or for some reason your kids mess with it or something, I don't know. And you need to adjust it. You need to have the gauge to set it. Using a caliper may get you by, but then you're just gonna end up tearing the clutch up. Um, use the gauge, set them all the same, or call the builder and see if you can set it to exactly what he set it to. Or if for some reason you wanna change it just a little bit, up or down a couple hundred RPMs. What I normally do in a pinch is I'll mark them all. It doesn't matter where you mark it. And then you'll take your Allen wrench and then you can rotate it 180 degrees so where this red line's here you'll put the red line over here same with this and do them all equal and that'll get you close enough to raise or lower the stall just a little bit to fine tune it if you need to like i said i normally don't recommend it and i tell all my guys don't touch any of this stuff because all you're going to do is mess it up anyway or someone's going to interrupt you and you're going to forget where you were and then you're really screwed if you just have to do them in 180 increments. Don't do it quarter turns or anything like that because then you gotta, you know, to me it's harder to guess. I can see the line was here and I can put the line over here. It'll get you by, but if you start having RPM fluctuation, something's probably wrong with the clutch and it just needs to be sent back in. Whenever I'm putting the gear back on, I always put a little bit of red grease on this as well. The 11 doesn't use a bushing or a bearing. It's just metal on metal contact. Same with some of the nines and tens out there. So I always just get a little bit of red grease and that's more than enough right here. And what I normally do is try to spread it kind of even and I'll put it on the top and then I put it on upside down to work it around a little bit. And then if there's any excess where there's like a huge clump somewhere, 
wipe it off, put it back on there and spin it back around. But that's all you need. You don't need to be able to see it. You don't need globs of red grease everywhere. Just enough that you know it's there. And then put your clutch all back together and you should be good to go. If you ever hear any weird noises, you probably just need to service your clutch. But that should be it on the disc clutch, guys. It's basic maintenance, very easy, but you have to do it. And if you don't do it and you complain about it, it's your own fault.